this summer, I met Barbara Edinger and Sven uh, Husby and uh, was so fascinated and alarmed at what they highlight in their new documentary, A Sea Change, which airs this Sunday. Uh, I asked them to come along today and enlighten us on a very important subject that affects all of us and will affect us in the future if we don't take charge. Uh, we've got a lot to share with you, so let's meet our first guest right away. Later, can you imagine a world without fish? Learn how the choices you make are affecting life under the sea. You've heard the expression, there are plenty of fish in the sea, but have you ever stopped to wonder, what if one day there were none? Well, this is the subject of a new documentary called A Sea Change, which explores ocean um, acidification and its detriment to aquatic life. Please welcome the film's director and co-producer, Barbara Ettinger. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you. And her husband and co-producer, Sven Husaby. It's very nice to have you both here. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, so, Sven, um, explain to our, to our viewers exactly what uh, ocean acidification is. It's, it's really a term that was coined by a scientist out on the West Coast, but it describes what happens as daily life has its impact on the oceans. Um, really since the start of the Industrial Revolution 200 years ago, right. we have been fueling modern life by the combustion of fossil fuels. And a byproduct of that is that we put CO2 in the air and 30% of all the CO2 we put in the air goes into the oceans. And that's at the rate, just to give you a sense of scale, a rate of 22 million tons a day. Of carbon dioxide? And, and that happens because of how we live our life, and how we heat so our much, homes. Gas has a lot of weight if you exactly. compress it. If you have enough of yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, it's how we heat our homes, it's how we move about, whether in cars, whether in planes, all of these things contribute mm -hmm. to. Sven was a teacher, uh, and actually, just, just coincidentally, at my daughter's school, Putney School in uh, Vermont. Uh, so, you're not really a marine biologist. Uh, but so what was your part in, in the creation of this film? Well, um, I, Barbara and I met about 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And Barbara was a filmmaker. And we met through an educational uh, project we were doing together. And when we finished that, uh, she said, you know how to fundraise. And it's not a big leap from fundraising for a capital producing. campaign to producing <laughs> for a film. Exactly. And I found myself as a producer. And then this time around, she said, well, when we discovered this whole issue, um, she said, how are we going to uh, raise the money? So I worked on that. And she said, but I think I need a grandfather for this film. Would you be willing to step on the other side of the camera? Uh -huh. So that's how I found how myself. Fantastic. Oh, great. Now, Barbara, uh, specifically, how does um, ocean acidification uh, impact us and sea life? Well, if you eat fish, it impacts tremendously because there is the threat to actually the survival of fish, the existence of fish in the sea. Um, and you may or may not know that uh, the 30% of the world's protein actually comes from the sea. Uh, and the problem really begins with these beautiful little creatures called pteropods that are at the base of the food web. Uh, they're these lovely winged creatures, frequently called sea angels, and they're the primary food source for most of the fish that we like to eat. These little creatures have very thin, delicate shells that are made out of calcium carbonate. And these shells begin to dissolve uh, in an acidic solution. Uh, and once that starts to happen, it becomes very difficult for them to survive as a species, and there goes the food source oh. for the fish. Um, what I'd like to do is a little experiment right here uh, to show you what actually happens to calcium carbonate, which is what chalk is. It's pure calcium carbonate when you put it in an acidic solution. But yeah. we'll begin by putting it in water, just plain water first, so that you can see nothing happens. that nothing happens. Yeah. Exactly. Here we go. Okay. All right. There so we can are. sit there and sit there. And, and nothing uh, will happen. Right. And here we are putting it the into chalk into vinegar. White but vinegar, vinegar has, uh, what, what pH is vinegar? About two. Oh, so that, oh my and gosh. Here you go. So and if now. we allow <clears throat> carbon dioxide to be, um, to, in, in increasing amounts, to be absorbed into the ocean's waters, 
we're going to lose what, what? We're going to lose the coral reefs. Th this is that's exactly what's going to happen. And this is, this is an exaggerated version, but clams. <coughs> we were watching the show before and salivating, thinking how good that looked. But those clams are very vulnerable right. to ocean acidification. Yeah. Oh yeah, their shells would not would not survive. They would um, not survive ultimately. That's right. But how how has the ocean changed? Um, the ocean's acidity has increased by 30 percent since the Industrial Revolution, and this was something that we we thought we were well informed uh, environmental observers. I guess that's the way I would describe us, and we had never heard of this phenomena, and that's really why we decided to make this film to do our very best to make a, an attractive film, an engaging film, and use it as a tool to make noise. Well, we've read about, uh, <coughs> I ate a piece of red hot pepper. <laughs> Ouch. <coughs> we've read about global warming. Um, uh, why doesn't this seem prevalent? Well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting. It's an issue that uh, scientists certainly were aware of the fact that the carbon dioxide was being sucked into the oceans, but they saw this as something very positive because it was sucking up you know, this toxic uh, uh, carbon dioxide that was in the air that we would have been breathing, but instead it was kind of stabilizing in the oceans. And they never dreamed, nor would any of us, that the oceans that are so vast could actually have a chemical change as a result of the combination of, the, of, el of elements. But in fact, about seven or eight years ago, they recognized that the chemistry is changing. And it came as a complete surprise to the scientists, and it's a, a very urgent situation that we all need to be aware of. So if we don't act right now uh, and stop this uh, infusion of CO2 into ocean, uh, what's going ha to happen? Well, if we continue uh, with it, business will it, will as it, usual... Will it, go, will it acidify even faster? Well, if we continue with business as usual, right. and I don't know... Uh, if I can introduce some numbers into this. But the way we measure the CO2 in the atmosphere is by indicating the parts per million uh, of concentration of CO2. And we're putting, we're right now at 388 ppm, as it's called. We're increasing at about 2.2 a year. And if we don't slow this down and stop it, uh, we are actually looking at a sea that could become so corrosive that calcifying organisms, that is, those organisms made out of calcium carbonate, could find a condition in which they can't survive. We might but have the Dead Sea. We might have a Dead Sea. Something. The bigger issue here, Martha, is not necessarily the amount of acidity, it's the rate at which things are becoming right, more I acidic. I understand, yeah. yeah. And we haven't seen this since... So what can we do? What do we turn off? What do we stop okay. using? No, exactly. And the good news is it, it isn't too late. So we do have an Just opportunity. another thing for all of us to really be concerned about, and we should be aware that this is happening. I mean, this is a very important, important uh, uh, thing going on. Yeah. So what should we do? You can begin with the simplest steps of conservation, and, and they're steps that we're all aware of, and if we just have to start implementing them. And, and Sven and I, we did get married in that 10-year time period. So at home, we have done all of these things. Uh, we've changed our light bulbs. We now have fluorescent light bulbs at home. We insulated our house. We turn off the lights when we're not in or, or using a, a room. We unplug our appliances that we're not using because there's vampire electricity that just keeps going right. into those appliances even after you've turned them out, off. So simple steps like that. Get a hybrid if you possibly can. We got rid of our car and got ourselves a hybrid. And then there are other, you know, kind of larger, more political steps that could be taken that Sven can mention. And well, anything producing energy, we have to look anything at. Anything producing yeah. energy. The idea is exactly cut way back on energy use, right. precisely. And, you know, one thing is talk to friends about this. Talk to neighbors about this. Make people aware that there is this condition called ocean acidification. And what we would love people to do, you know, what we've come to after nearly three years of working on this, is make noise. Write your policymakers, write your senators, write your congressmen. Uh, we have a huge climate conference going on in Copenhagen in December. Tell them to get oceans on the agenda and ocean acidification. Well, I urge everyone to act now before we deplete our oceans of what of the wildlife that thrives there. It's very, very important. There's more information at MarthaStewart.com. And be sure to watch A Sea Change, which premieres this Saturday 
at 8 p.m. on the Planet Green Network. So that's great. Good luck. Thank you.